Number two, the second element is valuation. So on the valuation side, your business worth is essentially a function of two things. One is your cash flows. If it's an already established business, what would it take to replicate it? So not just the cost of replication, but also the time to market and the opportunity cost. This is one path for how much it's worth. Second is replication. Third is how much value do you add? And then you've got the multiples. The multiples approach is price to earning, price to sales, price to... This is your valuation multiples that we'd used earlier to value the insurance industry. Normally what happens is that when you think in terms of a normal cycle, normal times, your investor payout, investors are not interested in just for the sake of investing. They're, in, they're in, interested in investing because their expectation is they'll put in a dollar in and they'll get 10, 15, 20 dollars out somewhere over the next five to 10 years. That dollar out is their payout. That payout is a function of a couple of factors. One is their payoff. How much is this business going to be worth five, 10 years down the road? The higher the payoff, the better it is. One is probability of success. What's the likelihood that this business will succeed and get to that payout? One is the discount factor, which is essentially the interest rate. One is future dilution. How much more capital do we need to raise to make this work? One is consumer traction. You know, how easy is it to, for the, for the underlying market to grow, for us to monetize, for us to reach and convert customers into paying customers. One is stage of economic cycle. So if you think in terms of the math, the math is payoff, higher is better. Success, probability success, higher is better. Uh, discount factor, lower is better. Future dilution, lower is better. Uh, consumer traction, easier is better. And growth cycle, economic cycle, growing is better, right? These are the six drivers that determine investor payout. And this is another normal cycle. But when you shift from a normal cycle to an extreme cycle or a down cycle, which is where we are right now, uh, the drivers remain the same. But everything which was in green is now in red. So the payoff expectations are lower, success, probably success is lower, interest rates are higher, you need more capital to make it work, consumer traction is lower mainly because you know discretionary income has declined and because the economic cycle is heading down, risk appetite both on part of customers, partners, vendors, and investors lower. In normal cycle, valuations tend to grow in this direction. In a down cycle, they had this downwards. But that's just one part of the equation. The second more important part of the equation is what happened to the interest rate environment. So if you look at the interest rate, this is a trajectory of the Pakistani environment from let's say Jan to April 2022. And I show this just to show you how quickly things change. This is where we were in January. 7.45% was the six month interest rate in on, actually not Jan, this is May. So this was May, 2021. And the 20 year rate was about 10.32%. So this was, and from here to here, what you see, this is called a yield curve. This is the six month rate, this is the one year rate, this is the three year rate, this is the five year rate, this is the 10 year rate, this is the 15 year rate, and this is the 20 year rate. By the time you get to April of the same year, this is at about 14.73%. Right now, this number is over 16%. And this is about 13.28%. Right now, this number is about 14%. All this in a span of what? In about 12 months. So you basically went from 7.45% to 14.73% in about 12 months. And you went from 10.32% to about 14% in, I'd say about, almost about a year and a half. Well, this is not a unique occurrence. It just happens on a regular basis. If you look at the history of rates in Pakistan, we've seen this picture many times before. So rates were high, then came low, then went high, then adjusted a bit, but then sort of stabilized, then stayed in this high rate environment all the way till about 2012. So the spike happened in seven, eight, and stayed for about five years. But then they sort of came down a bit, then went up again, then came down a bit significantly in 16. And stayed low till about say 18. But then they started moving up in 18 again, and stayed low till 19 till we got hit by COVID and because of COVID rates came down, but then stayed down till about 21 for a very short period of time. Came down, 
but stayed down for a very small amount and then started rising again. So if you think another cycle, this was one, this was two, this was three, this was four, this was five, and this was six. In about say 19 years, we've run how many cycles? We've run how many cycles? Six cycles. So about three years per cycle. So if you start tracking where this cycle started, which is 2021, and you apply the three year rule, you're saying this cycle is like to reverse somewhere in 2024. So you've got about maybe another year, another 12 to 18 months of hard times. Based on just, you know, a high level breakdown of the cycle itself. And as I said earlier, this is something, the rates environment, this is something that you don't control. This is external. You control, you don't control this. So you don't control the expectation and economic cycle. What do you control? Uh, you control what happens to discounted cash flows. To cash, not even discounted, to cash flows. You, you control this. You control value added. This you don't control. And in that context, I think it's really important to remember that if you don't control this, then you also don't control your valuations. You can control how the market perceives you. You can control where the market places you, right? But beyond that, not much. And this is a function also essentially a function of what we call market structure. So if you think in terms of where does capital allocation investment thesis happen, this happens at the pre-seed and seed stage here. But at what value it happens, you know, the multiples, this is not driven by what happens here. This is driven by what's happening here. And this is an external factor. So if this market dies or if there's a wall here or the gate is closed, right? Then what happens? There is back pressure because all of these transactions are going in this direction, but the door is closed. And that back pressure comes all the way down here and directly has an impact on how investors view your business. So there's a feedback loop from liquidity events to capital supply and allocation. And it's important to understand where you are in the feedback loop. Right now we're saying you're about 18 months away before that, before that we think, we suspect before that door opens. So you have to plan accordingly.